Okay, today we're going to dissect the thoracic cavity and the blood vessels of the mink. And what I've done is I've already cut open the chest cavity. And when you cut it open, you're going to want to use your scalpel, but make shallow cuts and be very careful because you don't want to cut through the heart or any of these really precious blood vessels that are underneath it. And you're also going to be separating the diaphragm from the abdominal wall and from the thoracic cavity. So we're gonna start with the diaphragm here and you're gonna trim it off of the thoracic cavity wall where the ribs are on either side, just so it's more flexible and you can move it around to see the blood vessels like you need to. Um, make sure not to cut it in half if you can help it. But I've also removed this portion of the rib cage just so that I could see what I needed to. We have already tested on the muscles so you don't have to save those, but you can bend them back and break them and move them out of the way. So when you open the chest cavity, you're gonna see the heart. You're gonna to need to remove the pericardial sac around it, this clear membrane, and you probably can see a piece of it back here. It's a tough membrane, so you're gonna to need to cut it with a scalpel, but that way you can see the surface of the heart. So this is the heart, and the structures you're responsible for are the right atrium and the right ventricle. Here's the left ventricle, and the left atrium is gonna be around the back. So the left atrium is going to be right here. You can see part of it. It's gonna be around on the back side of the heart. You also have the lungs on the left and on the right. Then if we move up, you're gonna cut through the skin of the mink, through the muscles of the mink, I should say, and peel these back so you can see the blood vessels. And the trachea is pretty long in the mink just because of their anatomy. But as you pull this back, you're gonna clean around and you're gonna find the trachea. It looks like a vacuum hose and has those C-shaped rings. This is the larynx, the voice box of the mink. And behind the larynx, you have the esophagus, this flat tube. So if it's flat, this is the esophagus. If it is nice and round and it feels like a vacuum hose, this is the trachea. You will also see the thymus gland sitting here, which I've removed. It'll be kind of a darkish brown color, probably about the size of your thumb. It's going to be sitting on top of these blood vessels and part of the heart in between the lungs. You're going to remove that with your tweezers and maybe a probe, but be careful because again, these blood vessels may want to come with it um, and you don't want to take these out. So you're going to remove the thymus. It says in your lab manual to remove it. You're not tested on the thymus, but you need to remove it so you can see all the blood vessels. So that is the thoracic cavity. Now we're going to go back to the heart and we're going to do the blood vessels and you're responsible for arteries and veins. There are some arteries that you're responsible for the left and right of, but it says left and right in your chart. So those are the ones you're responsible for if it's a particular side. We're going to be dissecting into the left side of the mink. So we're going to start at the heart. This is the pulmonary trunk. Then if we move the lungs over, you can see the aortic arch. This is the left subclavian artery that's going to move up and wrap around. And it becomes the axillary artery. This is the left axillary artery. This is the subscapular artery that goes back to the scapula. And then the brachial artery. And again, this is on our left side. If we go back to the aortic arch right here, you have the brachiocephalic artery coming off of that as well. It's going to travel up and become the left and right common carotid arteries. And if we move the superior vena cava over, you can see where it branches to become those two. You can also see this red artery branching off to the right. This junction of the common carotid artery and this artery, this is the right subclavian artery and it's very short compared to the human. So this is the right subclavian artery. The left subclavian artery is the large long one that we did first. Then we're gonna come back and look at the veins. This is the superior mesenteric, oh, I'm sorry, the superior vena cava right here. And in your lab manual, they may replace superior with cranial. It means the same thing. So just make a note of that. This is the superior vena cava. It will travel up and it's going to become the brachiocephalic trunk here. And the brachiocephalic trunk 
is going to branch and become the external jugular vein out here, which didn't um, fill with the blue latex very well, but this is the external jugular vein. You'll also see the branching right here at the brachiocephalic trunk, and I've pinned it because it came became detached, but this is the left subclavian vein. <clears throat> It's going to travel and become the left axillary vein, which you can see the blue there, left subscapular vein, and then the left axillary vein. So these are the arteries and veins of the thoracic cavity. But if we go back to the aortic arch here, which you can see here, if we pull the lungs back, you'll see the thoracic aorta, if it's above the diaphragm, which it is, it's going to travel down and it becomes the abdominal aorta here below the diaphragm. And so you can see removing the diaphragm from the thoracic cavity wall really helps a lot. So this is the ab abdominal aorta at this point. This is the superior mesenteric artery that goes to the small intestine. And you're going to have to clean these out a little bit to see the branching better. This is the celiac trunk and the celiac trunk branches to supply the particular organs here in the celiac area with blood. You have the hepatic, the gastric, and the splenic, and these are listed in the same order in your chart. Then, again, here's the superior mesenteric artery. You have the adrenal gland here, and you'll have a blue vein that runs through it called the adrenolumbar vein. And again, this one's not dyed very well, but you can see it going out into the surrounding area. So this is the adrenolumbar vein. Here is the renal vein going to the kidneys and the renal artery right beside it going to the kidney as well. Then if we keep moving down, here's our abdominal aorta. This one that I have a pin in that's very small, I'm gonna take the pin out so you can see it. This small artery is your gonadal artery. If it's in the male, like in this mink, it is the spermatic. If it's in the female, it's the ovarian and it'll go straight out to the ovary. But in the male, it's spermatic, so it kind of goes out and then down to the testy. Then we keep traveling down. This red artery here is the inferior mesenteric artery that supplies the large intestine. This one here going out into the lumbar area is the iliolumbar artery. Then branching off the aorta, we have the external iliac artery, which becomes the femoral artery in the leg. We have the internal iliac artery. If we go back and look at the inferior vena cava, which we could see underneath the heart, but we can also see it very well in the abdomen. Here's the inferior vena cava here. It's also going to branch and you have the external iliac vein, which becomes the femoral vein in the leg. And those are the arteries and veins of the mink that you're responsible for.